Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. As usual, it's Noah, and this is the fourth and final episode of the iOS and Android game making tutorial series. In this one, we'll add particles and sound effects to our game, take a look at different planet types you can make, as well as a different solution to increasing the game's difficulty. Liam won't appear in this video, he's working on some other secret projects. So let's start with particles. I won't show you how to make particles in this video. If you want to learn step by step how to do that, check out this video. So I have this simple effect called selection effect, and this similar one, just more prominent, called death effect. Both are prefabs. We'll spawn the first when the player clicks on a planet, and the second when two planets collide. So I'll open up the drag and drop script and make a public game object variable called selection effect. And all I need to do is instantiate that effect when the player clicks on a planet. So right inside of this if statement. Again, the first parameter inside of the instantiate function is what you would like to spawn. So for us, it's the particle effect. Then we need to state at what position, so simply the planet's current position, and with what rotation. We'll type quaternion.identity, which means no rotation. Now we can drag and drop the selection effect inside of the empty slot in the inspector for all the planets. You'll notice we get some cool effects spawning. Awesome. Now just make sure that on your effect you have stop action set to destroy. This way the particle system will automatically destroy itself once all particles have vanished. This makes sure the game doesn't get clogged up with useless effects that hurt performance. Next up, we're going to do a tiny bit of cleanup work. We'll head over to the random patrol script and remove this restart panel variable. Then I'll copy and paste the onTriggerEnter 2D function from that script to the drag and drop script. The reason I'm moving this function here is because all planets will have this drag and drop script on them, whereas you might not want every planet to randomly patrol around the scene. You might want to give your planets different behaviors. So this way the onTrigger function isn't repeated every single time you make a new move behavior for a planet. Finally, I'll head over to my game master script and create the restart panel game object variable right there. I'll also make a public function called game over and enable the restart panel inside that function. Then inside the drag and drop script, I'll make a private game master variable called gm and set that equal to the game object with a tag called gm in the start function. And now all I need to do is type gm.gameOver when two planets collide with each other. This also avoids us from having to drag and drop the restart panel inside of every single planet. Instead, we'll head back to Unity and drag and drop that panel inside of the Game Master script. I'll also create a new tag called gm and give our canvas, which has the Game Master script attached to it, that gm tag. This way the planets will find the object in the start function. And that's it! Our project is a little cleaner and more organized. With that done, we can head back to the drag and drop script and create a new public game object variable called death effect. And we'll instantiate that effect when the planet collides with another planet. If we test this out, you'll see that when two planets collide, the death effect spawns. However, it's kind of hidden because of the restart panel. So what we can do is simply delay enabling the restart panel, so the player has a bit more time to digest his defeat and see the death particle effects. So I'll head back to the Game Master script and make a new function called delay, and I'll copy and paste this line of code into that new function. And inside of the game over function, I'll simply call the delay function using invoke. We use invoke to basically call any function which we put between quotation marks, and then we state how long we want to wait before calling that function. So for example, I'll type in 1.5 seconds, so the restart panel will only be enabled 1.5 seconds after the planets have collided. So we're making great progress, let's add a simple sound effect when a planet is clicked on. I've made a basic pop sound, so I'll add an audio source component to all the planets and drag and drop the pop sound inside of that empty audio clip slot. And I'll disable play on awake because I don't want that sound to play as soon as the game starts. Instead, we'll hop inside of the drag and drop script 
and make a new private audio source variable called source, which I'll set equal to get component audio source in the start function. And now I can simply type source.play, and now whenever I click on a planet, there's a cool little sound effect. Now again, you can add as many particles and sounds as you want to this game. It's yours, so just get creative and have fun experimenting. We'll stop here for sounds and effects before the video gets way too long. Now let's add a simple score system to the game. I'll make a UI text element called score, and place it at the top of my scene. Then open up the Game Master script. I'll type up here using unityengine.ui so that we can make UI related variables and tweak UI stuff via code. Now I'll create a public text variable called score and in the update function I'll set score.text equal to time.time.toString. .time .to string. Basically the score text UI will display the amount of time that has passed since the game started. Text variables can only be equal to strings, which is why we're converting time.time .time to a string with this function. I'll also type F0 between quotation marks so that we don't get a decimal number but only full numbers. If we drag and drop this text inside of the Game Master script and test the game out, we now have a working score system. However, the score keeps going up even once the player has lost the game. To fix this, we'll simply make a bool variable called hasLost, and we'll check whether hasLost is equal to false. If that's the case, then the score can keep going up. We'll set hasLost equal to true, however, when the game over function gets called. This way, the score will stop increasing. Now, there are many ways you can expand on this project, one of which is adding different planet types to the game. For now, we have a simple, randomly patrolling planet. But how about making a planet that moves towards another planet? You would simply need to make a public transform variable called other planet and get the planet moving towards that other planet using the move towards function. Or maybe make a planet that doesn't move but shoots spiky projectiles. Just make that planet spawn a spiky projectile every X amount of seconds and then have the projectile target a random planet in the scene and move straight towards that, destroying itself either by colliding with a planet or reaching its initial destination. Or simply have static planets with long spiky arms that rotate around. Then you can make various levels with different combinations of planets. With three planet types, you could make all kinds of fun challenges for the player to overcome. So yeah, instead of doing the endless levels with planets that get faster and faster like we've done so far, perhaps make levels with different planet types and in different combinations. And challenge the player to survive 20 seconds, for example, in each level before moving on to the next. So I've gone ahead and made a couple levels. Let's now get the player moving between them whenever he beats one. So I'll head into the Game Master script and make a public flow variable called timer. This is how long the player needs to survive one level. And then I'll rename this text variable to timer display. And I'll set timer display equal to the float timer value instead of time.time. .time. I'll then check whether timer is less or equal to zero. If it is, then that means it's time to move on to the next level. If not, I'll slowly decrease the value of timer using minus equal time dot delta time. To hop to the next scene, we can copy and paste this line of code and simply add a plus one here. This way we'll move to the next scene stored inside of the build settings. So back in Unity, open up the build settings and make sure that all the levels are placed right there in order. And if we test the game out, you'll see that each time we beat a level, we move on to the next. You'll also notice how the text no longer displays an increasing score value, but instead shows us how long we need to survive before the next level. And that will mark the end of this small iOS and Android game making tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed it and feel ready to either continue working and expanding this project or make something else entirely. Almost a year ago I made a small tutorial series on how to make an endless runner like game in Unity. How about you challenge yourself to recreate that game but for mobile devices? Whatever you decide to do next, thanks so much for watching. There's a ton more free tutorials on this channel for you to learn from. Or also consider checking out me and my brother's mega 5 hours game dev Udemy courses. Okay, thank you to Blackthorn Prod's patrons 
for supporting this channel financially every month. Stay tuned, cheers.